Hey everyone, this is Joe over at Synergy 17, and um, today I'm going to show you how to use Vector Magic. Um, a lot of programs like WinPC, Oobling, CorelDRAW, etc., I think even Illustrator have um, software built in for vectorizing, and most of them do a pretty good job, but um, sometimes I have something a little bit more difficult and I like to have a little bit more control over it. Um, I like to use Vector Magic. I mean, the other ones have. Uh, also, parts you can control on how it vectorizes, but for uh, personally, I don't know why I, just, I like Vector Magic. It just works very well, and it's really simple. Maybe that's why I like cause the simplicity. So I'm going to show you an example of how to use Vector Magic. So I went online and I just Googled uh, Yankees logo, and I downloaded a GIF, <clears throat> not very high quality, just a a regular a regular thing. You can see it's got some ugly colors in it here, and uh, it's a it's a a bitmap, so a lot of garbage in it. So there's different options in Vector Magic. Uh, we have fully automatic, basic, and advanced, and uh, you can save some settings. And I'm just going to go through basic. I'm just going to walk you through how how I usually do it. I choose basic, and then it looks at the image. And then what I usually do here is it's going to give me uh, ask me some questions about the type of image is it? It's a photograph, as an artwork blended in. Uh, uh, edges, which is kind of like what you see here, which means it's got color with other colors. It's called anti-aliasing that um, allows it to give it this nice or uh, smoother look, a little blended versus this where there's no uh, blended edges. This is a hard edge. So we have this type of uh, graphic. And then it says, well, <clears throat> how is uh, how is the graphic? Because sometimes when you use a JPEG and you do compression, you get tons of artifacts here that look like these little uh, blotches. And this one's not too bad. I mean, we have a little bit of blotching on the outside, um, but nothing kind of in here in the middle. So I'm just going to use uh, medium. And now it's asking me how many colors there are within the graphic. And uh, you can say two colors if you're doing like a black and white image. Um, custom colors allows you to uh, pick and choose what you want. Or limited colors means if there's like 10 colors or 30 colors in it, leave them all. But we don't want that. We don't want this little half shade of blue, this half shade of red, and you know we don't want all these. We just really look at this and say there's red, there's white, and there's blue. So I'm going to choose custom colors, and it analyzes it, and it says it's trying to detect how many colors there are, and it's going to give me a little palette and say, okay, it says I see all of these, but we can narrow it down to this, 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 the different levels. But I really, like I said, I just see red, white, and blue is all I want. So I'm going to let, so this is suggested right here. I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, I like that. And now it's going to basically go through and try to, it's going to vectorize it. But at that point, it's going to give us options to allow us to modify what we see. So I'm going to go ahead and I have an older computer, so uh, it's going to take a few, you know, 10, 20 seconds to do this. But um, I'm going to let it go through. And some of the things that I'm going to do is I see these little laces here that I don't like. Uh, the trademark symbol, I'm going to delete that completely. Um, uh, just some other things I want to tweak on it. And uh, like I said, this isn't a, a, a bitmap editing program. It's not a vector editing program. But it allows you to do some quick editing that I can't do in um, Corel. In Corel or Photoshop, or not Photoshop, but uh, Oobling, I actually have to take the graphic edit the bitmap, then go in there, vectorize it, and if I don't like it, I go back into the editing program and change it, and it's back and forth. This one actually has a quick little feature in it. So, let's take a look at how it did. Zoom out. Okay. So, as I see this right here, it looks pretty good as a vector. I can click on this button over here that says bitmap, and I can actually flip back and forth. So as I push, click on the bitmap, you can actually see it's, it's there's the original jaggies along this here, see, and I let go, it shows me the vector. So it's kind of doing an overlay, which is pretty cool. I can see what things are not perfect and what things are, but I can see like right here all the red edges that were there, when it's in the bitmap are gone. So let's say I'm going to do this in vinyl, and I don't want to have this little white piece here. Maybe I don't want this little white piece. I don't want to weed that out. So I can go over here, and I can remove the background, or I can edit the result, which is what I want to do. I'm going to click on Edit Result, and now it gives me this little toolbar. 
it's got some really basic features. I can choose a color, I can use my pencil to draw, I can fill, I can zap, which is basically just a zap kind of knocks out something, and I can pan around. So let's say, for example, I don't want the trademark right here. I have multiple choices here. I could either fill, let's me move this over here. I could paint it with a pencil, white. I could fill it with white, or I can zap it. If I click zap, it just knocks that out and leaves the rest of it there, which is all I want to do. I don't want this little piece. I can zap that out. This white right here, I can click that and zap it. Click that one and zap it. Up here, I don't want that piece. Zap, zap, zap. So, um, <clears throat> quick way to clean up. And now let's say, for example, I want this to continue on. I want this red to... Um, actually come all the way up here. I don't want this to, I don't want to have to weed around it. Oh, here's a little piece right here too. Let's snap that. Um, so what I want to do is I want to continue this on. I'll take my pencil. Well, actually, I'll take my color, choose red, and have the pencil. Now I can actually just draw. I can just kind of draw some pixels there. Touch that here. I can make this touch this side here. That way, and if I don't like what I did, I can undo it. And just keep on clicking undo as much as you want. But I want this to actually touch here because I want my vinyl to be, um, I want to be able to uh, pull this off in one piece. Same thing over here. I'm going to continue this on with my pencil. So I'll make this one piece. And um, let's say I don't like how this kind of bulges out here. I can choose white, use my pencil, and smooth this out here. Same thing right here. Zoom out. And everything else seems okay. Let me show you an example of what the fill does. Let's say I, I wanted to fill that in. I mean, I can zap that away and it blends in. I'm going to undo that. Or you could actually choose the color. I can use fill and it does the same type of thing. It fills it in. So, uh, and revert will basically take it all the way back to undo everything I did. So I am going to delete that. I don't need that. I'll just keep that one piece. So after it all looks good, I tell it to uh, update. And update will basically go through and smooth results and, and update and fine tune it again. So we'll give that a few uh, seconds to do that. <clears throat> Um, but anyways, I, I really like this program. I think it's really easy to use. Um, I like the on-fly editing that I just did. Um, I just actually I noticed one more little piece in it, but we'll see if it disappears. I see a little white dot right here, and let's see if the it is smart enough to ignore it, or if it'll uh, make me go back and and zap that out too. And once we're done. It gives us the option to like save it as a um, EPS file. So let's see what it did. It actually knocked it out. So when I look at the bitmap, I can see the little white dots there. But it actually came out really clean. So I think it looks good. Um, let's uh, remove the background. So I can remove all this white here by clicking it. And I could also do this in my editing program, but it's easy enough to just click on, on the parts I don't need. So I'm just knocking out the background. So it looks good. I'm going to hit next. And um, if I if I want it, like say there's imp there's low and there's high detail, I, I could actually, uh, if I don't like the way the bitmap was, like I want more detail, like hey, this little lace right here is not, like it's more rounded instead of square like the original was, I can go to a higher detail and it'll actually uh, uh, go through and, and square that out. And I notice right here I also have a little bit of um, a white right there, so let me knock that out. Okay. So everything looks good. I'm happy with it. I'm going to hit next. And at this time I can save it or I can actually drag and drop, which is pretty cool. Drag and drop allows me to do this. So let me bring this down a little bit. I can actually take this and drop it here. And when I say OK, it actually brought it right in there. And if I go to wireframe, I can see it right here. And I can send this to my cutter. So, uh, or I can go actually back to here 
and save it. And I can save it as an EPS, DXF, EMF, PDF, and SVG. So, and I would just say uh, save as, and then save it to my desktop or whatever I want as an AI file. And there's my EPS. But that's it, and then that's about it. And I can improve it, which means go back, and you have some other options you can do. Um, this, it's kind of expensive. They have an online monthly one that they can do within the web browser, but um, I like the desktop version. Um, I think it's worth it to me. Uh, I like the vectorized stuff uh, for for cutting vinyl and doing stones and stuff. But it's something I use along with my other programs, along with Oogling and Corel. So, anyways, uh, I think they might have a trial version. Uh, you can go try it, download it, and play around with it. But I think it's a pretty cool program. Oh, and I noticed just now, I actually didn't knock that part out, but it's okay because even in Corel, if I go to wireframe, I can go in there and knock it out that way. Or I can just go back, remove the background, and knock it out, and then back again. So it's all good either way. Anyways, I hope this was useful.